have gathered from the east and the west, north and the south, united to join with Jesus as guests in this place today. Lord, I am asking you to speak to your people all by yourself. This church is not mine, it's yours. So God, remove me and let the people see you and hear you and respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now there's a lady in the community, you don't know her, Nadine. Come. Yeah, you don't know her. She's in this community a long time. Yeah. She's in this community a long time. You don't know her. You're going to know her now. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to know her now. You're going to know her now. So they, they don't know. They, they, don't, they don't know this stuff. But this young lady and I baptized the same day come from the same yard. <laughs> How many of you know Pastor Glenn Samuels? Yeah, yeah, Pastor Glenn Samuels is the one who baptized both of us in St. Elizabeth. One yard full of picnic. <laughs> and he baptized every picnic in the yard, <laughs> including your humble servant, Anne Nadine. She's his She's an inspector here at the 100 man police station. 35 years in the Jamaica, 34 years in the police services here in the Jamaica. Can the church say amen? amen? And remain a servant of the Lord. My sis, thank God bless you. Take care of her for me. We eat out of the same pot, live in the same house, baptize the same day, and going to the same place when the Lord comes. Amen, amen. And I think Leeton was around here. I don't see Leeton, but there are others. Some of the sisters may be watching online, wherever you are. We welcome you this morning. So, every time I'm supposed to speak for the Lord on this subject, I struggle. I struggle. Because I, I, and, and I, I felt it last week before I preached, and I'm, I'm feeling it again, Sister Carly. I'm feeling it again. I am struggling with my church. I am struggling with my church. Because the longer I spend in the Word of God is the more... I'm, I come out struggling with my church because I, I am not yet convinced that the church has a good understanding of God's grace. I, I, I am struggling I'm really struggling that, that our church still have not yet grasped the full impact of God's grace. Is the church with me? Yes, yes I'll tell you, I'm telling you where I'm going. I'm telling you where I'm going. Um, are you aware? Are you aware? that Jesus died, that Jesus was murdered, that Jesus was crucified because of the church? Oh, you still get it. Are you aware that it is not Roman soldiers who killed Jesus? That it was his own church? Are you aware, are you aware that Pilate wanted to save him? 
and says, why are we killing this man? And, and the church leaders, <laughs> it was the church leaders, say, if you don't kill him, you are not Caesar's friend. We want him dead. Are you aware that the problem Jesus had in his ministry was not on the, with the man on the street, but with the church? Are you aware, are, let me talk to the choir, are you aware that a good for nothing thief on the cross was able to detect that the man dying beside him was the son of God and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. But the chief priest down at the foot of the cross, who is the leader of the church, said, if you are. And you ask the question, how come the leadership of the church don't know that the man on the cross is a son of God, but a crook? How do you explain that? How do you explain it? The, pro the biggest problem Jesus had was with the church. Ah, Lord, help us, help us, help us, <laughs> help us. Um, um, hear me, hear me. Judas betrayed him, church member. Amen? Yeah. Simon questioned him. This man could never be a prophet. Because if he were a prophet, he would have known, tell me preach, last week's sermon, he would have known what kind of woman so he really couldn't come from heaven. He can't be God. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. He can't be God. And the chief priests, scribes, and elders refused to accept him. They, they, hey, they question every single thing about Jesus. They question his birth. Hey, this half ages, servant of the Lord says, they even question his birth. That he was born under questionable circumstances. This woman all of a sudden talk about she got pregnant and never knew a man. Ha! They question that his birth is illegitimate. illegitimate. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They question his birth. They, even the very place where he grew up in Nazareth, they question, can anything good Come out another right. They're everything about Jesus. They question everything. The reason why they killed Jesus is because in their mind, he didn't fit the profile of who God's supposed to be. Is the church with me? And that is dangerous because there are some folks who have a profile of what the church should look like and who the church should accept and who should lead, and who should participate, and who should be at the front seat, and who should be at the back seat. They have a profile. And if the profile is warped, we're in trouble. Oh, Lord. So, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. And, and because, because Jesus didn't fit the profile, I don't know where they get the profile, but in their mind, they ha hammer out a profile, an image of what God's supposed to look like. And when this man come and say, I'm the bread from heaven, <laughs> I am that I am, it really didn't match up with the profile that they had. Is the church with me? So now I'm going to tell you, get rid of the profile you have in your mind. Clear it out. Clear it out. Clear it out. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You can't put God in a box. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, you can't set a standard for God. God is above all standard. God is God all by himself. Are you with me? God says, I can curse who I want, curse and bless who I want, bless. I'm still God. Yeah. 
You know what they told me? I'm not criticizing my Sabbath school teacher. But they told me in church growing up, Jesus only used people who are willing. What? Have you guys ever heard that? Yeah, only willing, Jesus only used, God only used willing people. What? Who told you that? Because when I read for myself, not a single one of them was willing. <laughs> Moses, no Lord, I am st 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 stammer. You can't use me. <laughs> Jeremiah, no Lord, I am too young. Isaiah says, no Lord, I have a filthy lip. Jonah, run away. Not, <laughs> not a single one was willing. That's why I tell you, stop listening to church people and read Bible for yourself. So, 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 so this morning, for the next few minutes that they have assigned to me, I really want to use a story in the Bible to illustrate what God's church ought to look like. Amen? Yeah, yeah. What is God's church all to look like? Fantastic stuff. The, the story is set against a background. The reason, most of you may have heard about the prodigal son, yes? The reason, most of you perhaps don't even know why Jesus told that story. So here's the reason why he's told the story. Because the reason why he's told the story is even more important than the story itself. So I'm in Luke 15. And verse 1. The text says, Then, let's read together. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to hear him, drew near to him to hear him. Yep. So, right away, we have a, <laughs> we have a gathering of tax. You remember who I told you these guys are? For those of you who didn't know, I'll give you a little background. Tax collectors. Now in Jamaica, they're not too bad. But, <laughs> but, but in Jesus' days, stay with me. You, you got to get this. You ready for this? In Jesus' days, Jerusalem was controlled by a foreign power. Rome. Is the church with me? The Jews were controlled by Rome. When Rome conquered Jerusalem, conquered the Jews, Rome decided to charge them high taxes. So now the Jewish people have to pay taxes to this foreign government that is oppressing them. Is the church with me? They put up a resistance against it. So what the Romans did, rather than using their own people to collect the taxes from the Jews, they appoint some of the Jews themselves to collect taxes from among their own people and pay over to them. Is the church with me? No, the Jewish people turn against these Jewish tax collectors and say, the whole of you are traitors. Because you're not supposed to collect tax for your brethren to pay no foreign people. Are you with me? So they, they now consider these tax collectors as the worst of the worst of the worst. Is the church with me? Yes, scumbags, scumbags. The sinners we discussed last week. Anybody remember who they are? Oh, you don't remember? The sinner, and the Bible, and you designated a sinner in the Bible. And you say, and the sinners, the sinners is a name, is a designation given to women, particularly who are in prostitution. Are we together? That's why last week's story, they designate Mary the sinner. Good. So, so watch me now. So in the Jewish mind, the, hey, 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 the two worst set of people, somebody preaching with me, the two worst set of people you could ever find are tax collectors and sinners, betrayers and prostitutes. Are we together? Good, no. If you understand that, then you'll understand the background of the story. So the Bible says, then, then all, see the word all? See the word all? Then all the tax collectors and sinners 
these scumbags of society, <laughs> the Bible says, they drew near to Jesus to hear Jesus. Any problem with that? At least the, the church should not have any problem with that. Am I right? Yes, because Jesus is the Savior. And these people are sinners. And what the church should want is sinners drawing near to this. Come on, help me, man. What the church should want is sinners drawing near to Savior. Good, 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 good. Now, let's the next verse. The Bible says, and the Pharisees and the scribes. Scribes are like the church clerk. <laughs> the Pharisees are like the elders. The leadership of the church, the Pharisees and the scribes, when they saw so many stack collectors and sinners flocking around Jesus, always being Jesus' company, the Bible said they what? Complain. And you have to ask the question, what are you complaining about? Amen. If sinners are drawing close to Jesus, shouldn't that be what the church want? Then what's the complaint? They co what's the complaint? Saying, this man receive, <laughs> receives sinners and eat with them. Mm. Mm. Which means, if he were God, God don't eat with... God don't eat with sinners. And, hey, hey, hey. And, and God don't receive sinners. You see, that's their concept of God and them running church. And by the way, that's not the first time when Matthew, this is where the big problem, when Jesus called Matthew, it nearly mashed up the whole thing. Here's why. In, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, Jesus passed from here and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. So Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector. Is he with me? Guy was at work. Yes? And the Bible says, and he said to Matthew, he says, follow me. So he arose and leave his calculator, leave his pad, leave everything, leave everything and follow Jesus. Mm, this tax collector. Is the church with me? Good. And if you read Ellen White's stuff on that Desire of Ages, uh, he was so impressed with Jesus and was so grateful that even though the rest of the Jewish people criticized him and say all manner of things about him, this rabbi came by and recognized him. He dropped whatever he was doing and he followed Jesus. Is the church with me? Now it happened, verse 10, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, watch me, so, so you get the back row. So Matthew was so grateful that Jesus chose him to be part of his disciples. In fact, his disciple number five, is the church still with me? That Matthew decided to keep a little reception to give Jesus thanks for choosing him to be a disciple. Is the church still with me? Good. So at that reception, guess who will be coming? All his co-workers. <laughs> who are his co-workers? Tax collectors. Yes, 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 yes. So, so the Bible says Jesus sat at table in the house. That be, and behold, many of his co-workers came out. Amen. And who else come? See, now these are bread and butter. Anyway, you see one, you see the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, many. So the house was filled with tax collectors and sinners. And listen, the last place the church want to see God. Hey, 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 hey. Because in their mind, God is too holy hey, hey, to be in that room filled with. So the Bible says that he came and sat down with him and his disciples. Verse 11. And when the, and when the Pharisees saw that this man who claimed to be God, this man who is a religious leader, this man who is a rabbi, 
Let me say one more time. Who they had a problem with? Who did they talk to? You know, some people in the church behave the same way. They have a problem with the elder. I mean, we go to the elder and talk. <laughs> you find a little group around you. Why the elder dressed like that? Hey, that's a satanic approach. So, so what, 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 what they're trying to do now is drive a wedge between Jesus and his disciples. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So rather than go ask Jesus, Jesus, why are you eating? No, 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 they went to the disciples. Hey, we don't understand your master. We don't understand your master. Why your master choose to eat with the scumbags of society? Explain it to us and call himself God. I tell you, the church has a warped concept of who God is. When Jesus heard it, when the, uh, um, uh, 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 the next verse, when Jesus heard that, when Jesus heard it, Jesus don't even allow the disciples to answer. He took it up, he said, he said, he said, he said to them, hey, he said, hey, you have a problem with that? Let me straighten you out. Amen. Those who are well, have no need for physician, but those who are what? Sick, 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 he says, but go and learn what this means. I desire what? I desire mercy, not your sacrifice, not your offering, mercy. And then and before they go, he says, for I learned this, learn this brother. I did not come here to call the righteous. Come on, say it with me one more time. I did not come here to call. Yeah, every church member must know. The church was not raised up to call. Hey, we're not preaching in this crusade to call. Call the righteous. Righteous, you can stay home. This campaign is not for you. We pitch this then to call sinners to repentance. Hey, man who grinding the hand middle every Monday morning with ganja. This church is designed to call you. Man stink with rum. This church is designed to call you. Man with a gun in their back pocket. This church is designed to call you. Man with 10 baby mothers. This church is designed to call you. Those are the people we pitch the tent to call. Not the righteous. So when they start to come in the church with a cliff in their back pocket, leave them alone. Leave them alone. They come with their hair nut up and their teeth black with ganja smoking. Leave them alone. Didn't come here to call. You see, you see, the church thing is righteous. Jesus come here to call. Not righteous. Came to call sinners to repentance. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sinners to repentance. Hang on, hang on. And when you come, the grace of God will transform you. You grow in grace. The things of this world will go strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. Are you with me? That's why every single one of you hear the preaching tonight, today, you can come as you are. Some church member may not like it, but it's not them you're coming to. It's God. So to make the point, Jesus told them the story. Oh, by the way, all of that was just the introduction. <laughs> Jesus told a story to teach them this point. Here's a story. Luke 15, 11, 15, 11. He said, Jesus said, a man had two sons. This is Jesus' story, not mine. He said, a man had two sons. How many sons? Two sons. And the younger one told his daddy, say, Father, give me my share of the estate. Let me break that down for you. The estate. 
The eighth state is a deadlift. Amen? Amen? Yes. So this boy <laughs> knows that when his daddy died, the, all the daddy had will be divided up between himself and his brother. Is the church with me? Yes. And back then, the ratio in which they divided was two-thirds for the older one, one-third for the younger. So he already take calculator <laughs> and work out his one-third. Amen? And convert it in Jamaican dollars. That's a lot of money. So he already, he already calculated it out. And then he says to his daddy, watch me, he says to his daddy, Daddy, um, the one-third of your estate that I will get when you die, um, I, 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 want, <laughs> I want it now. But Lord Jesus, if that daddy was a Jamaican daddy, one box he get, he run out of here. In other words, he can't even wait until daddy die. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The boy can't even wait until daddy die. He want it from now. Guys, don't try that with the daddy at home. And you know what the daddy did? The daddy didn't even say a word. No, if it was me, we're going to have a serious argument. Amen. Daddy didn't say a word. Bible said, so the father divided his property between them. And give my friend... His. Verse 13. Verse 13 says, not many days after, a couple days after, this young son gathered all together. Amen. Must have converted all this stuff into cash. Because young people now in trouble with goat and sheep and all. <laughs> all right? so, so he must have converted it into cash. So he is he's set. And you know, when, when young people have cash, they think, they're, they think they're saying one. Yeah, man, yeah, man, they're the best thing in the world. So he set. And the Bible says he decided to journey to where? A far country. Anybody know why he chose to go far? <laughs> the boy, hey, the, based on, watch me, based on the life he wants to live, he really don't want to stay anywhere near home. Next thing a neighbor go tell his daddy, I see your boy, I see your boy. I see, oh Lord, I'm I see you, I see your boy at the at the rum bar. Yeah, yeah. So rather than doing that, he journeyed to a, a Jamaica has a terminology for four. Four. You, you know we have some words, I don't know where we get them from. But <laughs> he, he journeyed to a four country. Way out. So that when he's partying down and up, hey, nobody do, no, no, him. Hey, can anybody identify with that? Mm, 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 mm. And when he reached here, by the way, before you go to a far country, you see, just remember, the further the country, the longer the walk to come back home. When he went there, Jesus in the story said, the boy wasted, the boy what? Wasted his possession with prodigal living. And I had to look up that one. What does that mean, prodigal living? So I look up the word. Are you guys ever look up that word? Or are you just accept it? Prodigal. Prodigal. I look up the word. You can look it up in Google. It says, one who wastes money. One who what? Um, one who just wastes money. Hey, if that is true, you have some prodigals around you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have some, some husbands are prodigal. Some wife, prodigal. <laughs> some children, prodigal. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are one of those who just, just spend. Hey, hey, you know people who just spend? Yeah, yeah really, spend, spend, spend. You give them a million dollars and by next week it finish. You just... Spend. Those are what you call prodigal. Prodigal. Don't go home and call anybody prodigal. Let me not take it easy. So the Bible says he wasted his possession 
with prodigal living. Okay, I'm in next verse. Verse 14. But when he had spent all, when the put another way, when the money done precisely, when the money done, <laughs> there arose what? A severe famine in that land. Amen. And he began to be in. No, this is Jesus' story, not mine. Not mine. But I want you to notice in the story. When did the famine come? Ah, after the money done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. The famine appeared after the money. You know, you know I want to talk to you. Some, can I say, sometimes God permits the famine. Because had it not been for the famine, the boy's life wouldn't be changed. Are you with me? Hey, sometimes you're going through some hard stuff and you don't know why the hard stuff is coming. God is directing your path. Are you with me? Because even though the boy went far and started to live all kind of life, the eyes of the Lord are still over him. Because once you're a child of God, you'll always be a child of God. And God will do anything he can to save you. Take away your job to save you. Mash up your marriage to save you. Bring death in your family to save you. He will do anything to save you. The famine came. This boy must have thanked God for the famine. He, he was in want. It's one thing when famine come on, you have money. You still have a problem. But when you don't have any, it's worse. So this man is at the worst of the worst of the... Oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit tell me, must tell you. Can I tell you what the Holy Spirit tell me? He don't use the hard life. Ah, the, <laughs> the whole... Pastor Smith, the yard is coming from. He has servants who make his bed. Chef who cook his food. I wait, God, now what do they think? This, this guy don't use the hard life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now, now he's in a rough spot because he neither have money, neither have food. And the mistake he made was to go to a far country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says he went and joined himself. To a citizen of that country. Which means that he's in a country as an alien. Yeah. Amen. He don't have no citizen. His immigration status is in question. <laughs> Illegal immigrant. Yeah. Amen. He, he can't get no job because he need a work permit. Hey. He need a, is the church with me? Yeah. He need a work permit. You see when he was going on at money. He never, <laughs> he never worry about work. Because his back pocket is full. Yeah, now that he's empty, he's in a trouble. No job, no money, no food. So he need a job. And oh, oh, I can't get a job. I need a work permit. So he went and, and joined up with one of the citizens of the country. And he sent him in the fields to feed swine. No, no. <laughs> no, hang on. This is Jesus' story, not mine. But this is important, swine. Why? Because Jews and swine. <laughs> Jews and swine. No mix. So to take a job. Hear me, hear me. E hey, to, to take, even if you're a pork eater. To take a job to feed pigs. Suggests the worst, the lowest of the lowest of the lowest you could possibly be. But I have to give the boy credit. He take the job anyhow. Yes. Amen. So he, will, so he start feeding swine. Uh, this is not my story. This is Jesus' story. The text says, And while he was feeding the swine, he gladly full his belly of the pig food. Ah, Lord Jesus. Even though nobody give him it. Which means, which means, he stole it. Stole it from who? From the pig. That's how far the boy fell. From the pig. Which, oh, you don't get it, do you? Which means that the pig 
has dinner guaranteed. Which means the pig is living a better life. And you ask the question, how could you fall so far and so quickly, my friend, from a life of royalty to a state where pig living better life than you? This is not my story. This is Jesus' story. Is the church with me? Good, verse 17. So, so, so while he was there eating the pig food, he said, you have to see him, you have to see him in the pig pen. Pig pen is a nasty place, you know. And by the way, pig don't want it clean. The worst thing you can do is give pig clean, clean place. No, pig want it to be mucky and nasty. That's their comfort zone. Amen? Yeah, don't want it. You have to see him sitting on the fence overlooking the pig. Already just fill his stomach with some of the pig food. And the Bible says, while he was there, he came to himself. What does that mean? In the pig pen, in the midst of his situation, watch me, his mind journeys back home. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. His, ha, his mind drifts back home and he started to look in the kitchen look in his bedroom <laughs> are you with me and he said he said hang on hang on something is not right here how many of my father's servants the chef the gardener the janitor all those people that my daddy hire how many of them have bread enough to spear and I what am I son and I am son and I'm here eating pig food something not right with this picture amen and so now watch me now he longed to go back home oh Jesus because in his mind, as bad as things back home, no way, no better than yard. So he decides, hey, 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 the, the, the gardener and the, uh, and the butler and the housekeeping staff and all of them who wash dirty plates in my daddy's house, they are living a better life than me. And so he began to wonder, I wonder if... Because, you know, I've already, <laughs> watch this, I've already taken everything that belonged to me. So I don't have anything back home. I can't go home to claim anything because I've already taken my position. But I'm wondering if by the grace of God, I wonder if home will take me back. I used to be in the church singing and preaching and teaching Sabbath school and living a good life. I know I got messed up, make wrong decisions, make bad choices, find myself in a pig pen. But I wonder if the church will take me back. I used to lead out in the church. I used to be tied up and rough and tangled up with God. I used to be, have a good life, good reputation. But I got myself messed up in a far country and I'm wondering. I sit in my mess. I need to get out of this mess. But will my church take me back? Will they require me to sit at back bench? Will they see me differently? Will they treat me differently? There are so many people still in the pig pen out there who want to come home, but when they look at home, oh boy, home no look too. 
when they look at home they're not confident that home is willing to take them back are you church with me And some of them scared of coming back home and they eventually die in the pig pen. That's why I told you, I have a problem with my church. How can I get my church to understand the love of God? Because if we do this place, every church will be jam-packed with prodigals coming home. So he sat on the edge. You can see him sitting on the edge, looking on the pigs below him. Processing this thing. Processing this thing. Can I go home? How many, how many, how many servants my daddy have? Uh, and they, they have food to spare. And I'm son. I am son. Amen. I'm son. And I'm here starving. Something not right. And the Bible says, Bible says, verse 18. I wish. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. His mind went back home. And when his mind went back home, his mind saw his daddy. The mind, his mind landed on his daddy. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, he, and knowing who his daddy was, he felt comfortable. Hey, that if, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He knows that there's a brother there, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's hoping that when he goes home, daddy will see him before brother see him. Because if brother see him first, somebody if brother see him first brother gonna stop him at the gate and says not under my dead body you don't have anything here keep moving some people don't come home because they know brother is still at home so the text says he decided, I'm going to take the risk. Amen. I will arise. And, and I'll go where? Go to whom? Go to whom? My father. Amen. When you come back in the church, you're coming back to your father. Not the elder. Not the church board. Not the conference president. Not the pastor. Your father. I'll go home to my father because I know no matter how messed up I am, my father's love will pardon me. I'm going home to my father. And then, and then he sat down in the pig pen and practiced a speech. You got to see him. Can you see him? Yeah, yeah. In practice, in practice with the pig, you know. The pig is the audience. <laughs> he says, I will go home and I'll say to him, Father, <laughs> Father, I have, I have sinned against heaven and before you. He must have practiced it, the tone of voice. Fa and then pause. Father, well, let me get this right. Father, amen. Can you see that? This is a man that is working on his salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man has a sense the need to come back into God's grace. Are you with me? So the speech is here. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And hear me read, hear me read. This is the speech. And I am no longer what? Worthy keyword, Daddy, are coming back. I just want you to know I am aware. I am conscious that I've already exploited all that belong to me. I am coming back knowing I am not 
worthy. Come on, say, I am not what? I am not worthy to be called your son. Hey! Daddy, I know I messed up. I know I disgraced the family. I know I embarrassed your name. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I'm just letting you know, I already know that I messed up. I'm not worthy. I ain't coming back to claim sonship. I ain't coming back from a room. I know. This is what we call a broken and a contrite heart. So he says, I know I'm not worthy to be son. So I'm just asking, are you prepared to take me back in as one of your, as one of your servants? I just, I just need to get home. I just, I just want to get home. I just want to get home. I, I made bad choices. I made wrong decisions. It threw me into relationships that I'm not. I have two children out of wedlock and no husband right now. I just want to get home. I just want to get home. Choose the wrong woman, choose the wrong man, choose the wrong job. Mess up Jesus, but I just want to get home. Bring me back to the place where I belong. I just want to get home, Jesus. So daddy, can you take me back as a servant? I'll wash the pots. I'll do the bathrooms. I'll cut the lawn. Is the church with me? Ah, I call that humility. And let me tell you, when God sees a humble person, it moves the hand of God. Yeah! And when he finished with his speech, he jumped off the ledge. Ha. I don't know if you even tell the boss he's gone. He arose and decide to head home. But it's a long way home because he went to a far country. Can you imagine him on his way home wondering what things going to be? He alone traveling home. Know how messed up his life has been. Go over in his mind the stupid things that he has done. How he embarrassed his father and his spirit was broken. As he traveled back home, country road, Take me home to the land where I belong. Yes, Lord. He walked home. But the text says, when he... Hey, hey, watch the text. Watch the, watch the text. Watch the text. When he was still a great way off, way down the road. Guess who saw him first? Hallelujah. That's what he, father saw him. And the Bible says, the minute father spot him, father had what? Father had what? This is what the church must have for sinners coming back. Compassion. Compassion. Some of us have too much rebuke. Hey! Compassion. Bible says the father had compassion and the, fa and the father start to run. Hallelujah. Fell on his neck and what? And kiss him. Embrace him. Can we have a church like this? When the young people mess up. Can we have a church like this? That's what God looks like. Compassion. Compassion. If you're out there, folks, and you have made some mistakes in your life, come home. God will have compassion on you. 
He wants you to come home. He fell on his neck and he's kissing. Huh? Watch. Watch how this thing is nice. This thing sweet, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch how this thing nice. So now, now the son practiced this speech for a long time. Ready to deliver. Are you ready for this? So after daddy hug him and kiss him, son says, son says, dad, um, this is a speech coming out. I have sinned. Dad, I just want you to know, I, I know I've sinned against heaven and against you in your sight. And Dad, I'm no longer worthy to be called, come on, help me with the speech, to be called your son. There's a full stop there. There's another part of the speech, am I right? What the other part go? Make me one of your... Good. So my man will finish the speech. Is the church with me? Yeah, right here. See there? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So the speech is to continue. But when we go to the next verse, hey, the father interrupt him. Son! Hey, Jesus, help us in the church. Son! Your, your speech is not necessary. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your apology. <laughs> Elizabeth, your apology is not necessary. The very fact that you come home is enough. The fact that you decide to come back Stand at the altar and give your heart to the Lord. You don't have to apologize to the church. Your speech is not necessary. Just come home. Just come home. Just come home. The text says, the daddy, look at it, verse 22. But, my man giving his speech, the father stopped. But the father said to my man giving the speech, father said, Shh, turn his attention. I don't want to hear no more from you. <laughs> turn his attention to the servants and said, hey, you guys, go in the closet. Ah, oh God, some people in the church can't take this part. Hey, 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 is the church with me here? Go in the closet and bring out which robe? Which robe? The best one. The most expensive, the most glamorous, the most precious, the best one in there. Bring it out. Oh God, when will my church Bring out the best robe for a member who got pregnant out of wedlock. Hold me my church. Bring out the best robe for somebody who is in gambling and drug addiction. When will the church bring the best robe for people who mess up and want to come back in? Don't bring the second hand robe. Hey! Now bring the second hand robe. Don't, don't discriminate. Because in the Father's eye, there's no discrimination. Bring out the best. And put it on him. Hey, the, the servant, Pastor Simon, the servant must be stunned. And then, and then, and then he says, and by the way, you, you go into the jewelry section <laughs> and put a what? A ring on his finger. Let me help you with that because some Adventists have a problem with this text. <laughs> this, is Je this is Jesus' story, not me. But the ring is significant because, watch me, 
In royalty, every prince has a ring. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Servants don't wear a ring. Are you with me? But if you're a son of the king, you wear a ring. Is the church with me? So when the daddy says, bring a ring, put on his finger, the servants knew right away that daddy was replacing the boy back to the, back to the position of sonship. Treating him as if nothing, oh, Jesus, treating him as if nothing happens. When will the church reach that level? Treating the boy as if, hey, come on, help me preach. Treating the boy as if nothing happens. Put a ring on his hand. And, and then go in the footwear section. And bring what? Which means that the boy come on barefoot. Oh, Lord of mercy. I checked the text and I didn't, see a, I didn't see a verse where the boy go bathroom and wash up before he come home. All the stinking smell of the pig food. He came home just as he was. Pig food in his teeth. And the father put the best robe over his nastiness. Put sandals on his feet, ring on his finger. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. We tell sinners, come as you are. And when they come, people start, my no, you can't go to church like that. Oh, I is not finished. Then the daddy said to a third servant, you who work in the culinary department, says, hey, hey, go around the house back. And you see the big fat rummy that we keep in for Christmas. Oh, oh. Get the fat, get the fatted calf. Amen. Bring it here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. You notice this guy get the best robe and the fattest calf. And the best of 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 the best. Can your stomach handle that? Somebody who mess up themselves? Can you really handle that? You know, if, if, people, if people mess up and come back in the church, and people say, well, you can't let him do that. You can't let him do that. You can't let him. You can't let him. You can't let him do that. You can't let him there. Hey, hey. Kill the fatted calf and let us be what? Let the church be merry. Amen. There are some folks getting baptized today. Let the church be merry. Let the church be merry. Why? For this, my son was dead. And he's alive again. He was lost. And he's found. And they began to be merry. The church must be merry when sinner come home. Be merry. Well. So they throw a big pot. Music playing, people eating, servants were so happy to welcome back the father's son, laughing and chatting and having a wonderful time. Then in the evening, is the church still with me? The older son came home. It's a good thing he came while the boy wasn't there. He came home from the field. The Bible says, as he came, he drew near to the house. And he heard, let me read. He heard music 
and dancing. Watch me, watch me, watch me. And he said, he said, that's strange. You know, my yard, never in my life I hear my father playing music. <laughs> what is going on in my father's house? Hey! That's strange. My father don't dance. That's strange. Amen? Yeah, but watch it. Before he went in himself to go look, he stayed outside and called one of the servants and asked him, say, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. What, what's going What's going on inside? I know this house. I born and grew up in it. Never are we have any music and that. What's going on? And the little servant, very naive and innocent, <laughs> filled with joy. Are you with me? He had my ice cream licking. <laughs> Amen. Enjoying himself. Amen, because it's, it's merry time. And he says, hey, yeah, man, I can't tell you what's going on. Your brother, with a lot of excitement, you know. Uh, Things said this bigger brother is going to be happy. Yo, hey, hey, we, we, we're having a big party. Your brother came home. And you, you see the big Rami that was the back of the house? <laughs> Your daddy killed it. <laughs> Manish water, curry goat. Big party going on. Because your daddy is excited because he received him safe and sound. Man filled with excitement. And when you look in the face of the brother, the countenance change. The Bible says the big brother, help me preach. Angry, so mad that he would not go in. Angry, how can your brother come home and you're angry? How can your brother who has messed up his life in drug den and prostitution den and all kind of stuff straighten up his life and come back to serve God and you're not happy? How? And he wouldn't go in. And it is the father again who came out, put his arm around him and pleaded with the church with me, pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his daddy, he says, Daddy, I'm mad as hell. These, he said, lo, these many years I have been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. I've never done anything wrong. I've never embarrassed you. I've never let you down. I've never, I've never, I've never. And you never one day take up a little meager goat and kill for me and my friends. But this. But as soon as this, your son, who has devoured your, your livelihood with harlots. As soon as him come home, you kill the fatted calf. And he was mad. I have a question for you. You ready for it? I'll close right now. I'm ready for it. Here's a question. If... My question is to the bigger brother. Yes? Yes, I want to talk to the bigger brother. Bigger brother, if you have never left the house, meaning you have never backslid from the church, if you have never broken God's commandment, meaning you live a perfect life, if you have been so faithful, you have been with your father all these years, how come? Nothing don't rub off your father on you. How come? If you have with the if you're in church every day praising God, if you have never messed up in your life because you how come? How come you don't have your daddy's love? How come you don't have your daddy's compassion? How come you don't have any mercy? How come? The 
the father looked at him. And the father said, son, you're always with me. And all that I have is yours. But I got to tell you, help me read. It was what? It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead. Your brother was dead. Your brother was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is found. You should be in the party rejoicing. You should be in the party rejoicing. There are, there, there are too many folks who want to come back in the church but are scared of the big brother. Scared of being criticized. Scared of being discriminated against. Scared, 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 scared. God has sent this message to some person under the tent this morning to say to you, come home. This house is not the brother's house. It is the father's house. Come home. He was weary. Come home. Come home, come home, come home, because God's grace is always greater than sin. Come home, don't be scared. If you make a mistake out there, if you blunder out there, if you mess up out there, if things didn't work out the way you plan out there, come home. It is better in God's house, God's house. It is better Jesus wants you to come home, come home, come home. I'm going to ask this congregation, this appeal to you. If you are in, let me talk to this congregation. Let me talk to this congregation. Congregation, if you can identify with this boy's struggle, if you have been to that place where you made wrong decisions, bad choices, it landed you at places that you never wanted to be. But by the grace of God, you found yourself and you came home to God and now you're rejoicing. If that describes you, stand on your feet and let the whole world. If there was a time in your life when you were in a bad position, wrong choices, bad places, but oh God, you came to your senses, you walk and give the Lord your life and now you're rejoicing. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let the rest see. Almost all of us have been there one time in our life. One time in our life. Now, now, my dear friends. Now, my dear friends, you are in this place and God call you. If you are in this place and you find yourself in a situation where it is not well with your soul, bad choices, wrong decision, circumstances of life conspire against you. And in the depths of your soul, you want to have a second chance. Says, God, I want to come home. Can I invite you? Can I invite you to raise your hand wherever you are? Go raise your hand. God bless those hands. Raise your hand where you are. God, I want to come home. God bless your hands. God bless your hands. God bless those hands across there. God bless your hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, hey, I made bad choices, made wrong choices, messed up in my life. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm coming back home to my father's house. I'm coming back to put my hand in God's hand. I'm coming back to give myself to the man who can calm the waters. Hey, I'm going to pray for you this morning. Come on. Come on. May I invite you to come. Those who raise your hand, I'm going to invite you to come right up here walk for Jesus walk for Jesus come on up God bless you God I'm putting myself in God's hand I'm giving the Lord my life today giving the Lord Jesus my life God bless you God bless you God bless you my praise team is gonna sing my song for you come in the name of Jesus come come in the name of Jesus come 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 God bless you God bless you come God bless you God bless you Come, come, God bless you. God bless you. Come. God bless you. 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 Come. In holy pages. Yes, Lord. 
God bless you come God bless you come God bless you come God bless you God bless you God I want to surrender surrender to you Jesus God surrender to you Hey I make some mistakes in my life but I'm surrendering to you You're coming. Praise the Lord. You're coming. Grace will always, always be greater than sin. Yes, sir. come, come. Calvary, Calvary has proven it time and time again. God bless you. 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 about your soul salvation come come is there another come is there another 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 god bless you they're coming 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 yes sir is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Always be greater than sin. Sing that song. They're still coming. Still coming. Sing that song. They're still coming. this campaign there are hey have you noticed hey hey have you uh, sermon is finished but if I if I had more time I would have preached a little longer have you noticed that the true son who was lost was the older one have you noticed that he was lost in the church have you noticed that he was in the church but he was lost ah Jesus since we started this campaign a number of church folks, both this church and other churches, have recommitted their life to God, have started over. There are so many who are dying for a start over. This prodigal asks God, I want to start over. I mess up in the past, but I want to start over. I want to start over. I want to start again. Again. 
I'm going to make this last call as the praise team sing the amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Stop. For those here, the preacher, if you came to this campaign today and there's a desire in your heart, you know your life situation, you know you perhaps have been in a far country, bad choices, wrong choices that mess you up, by the grace of God, you plead with God for a start over. Today is your day. I'm going to ask you to leave your seat and come. It says, God, if you will take me home. I want to start over this morning. Come, come, as the praise team sing Amazing Grace. Come, this is for you, this is for you. Amazing Grace, how sweet the Come, this is for you. That saved a wretch like me. Sing that song I want. this morning come 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 you used to walk with the Lord and you slip away come you used to be tangled up with Jesus and you slip away come 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 this morning is your morning this morning is your morning this morning is your morning come is there another is there another God bless you I see you coming I see you coming How with God once. You are walking with God once. You used to be in the house of the Lord once. Situation and circumstances drag you out. The Father say come. The Father say come. The Father say come. The Father say come. Is there another? Is there another? Can we get some volume on her mic as we sing? Sing the song. Praise the Lord, they're coming. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hear another. meeting I must close this meeting the Spirit of God declares there is still yet another fighting struggling don't fight God don't fight God don't fight God if you are struggling it means that God is trying to save you don't fight God. Yield up to God and come. Come, come, come. I don't know who God is working with. Come! Last call. Come. Come. Hold somebody's hand and come. Says, Father, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Take me back, Jesus. Even as a servant. Come. I don't know who God is waiting on. Come. Come, 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 final call. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come! Don't let the enemy hold you. Give Jesus the victory. God bless you. Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? God bless you. Is there another one? 
God bless you. God bless you. Come, you know yourself. Is there another one? Is there another one? Today is the day of decision. Is the day of decision. Thank you, praise and to praise word, praise and team. Thank you, musician. Thank you. Thank you. This is the moment of deliverance. Today we leave in church to the sea to give God his children who surrender their heart to him in baptism. This is your opportunity to do so. I am going to, uh, can, can I ask you guys to come up on stage for me? Come and just get some space for these people behind you. Just come on up. Just come on up. 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 There's some space behind you for people. Come on up. Amazing. Come on up. Come on up. Uh, come on up, 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 come on up. Where's one some space behind? Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Want some space behind? Come on up. Come on up, come on. Come on up, come on up. Sing that song. Come on up, come on up. Don't be afraid, come on. But now come on up. Come on up, come on up, come around, come on up, come on up, come on up. Was blind. Was blind. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be shy. Come on up, come on up. You guys at the back. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come a little closer. 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 a good problem we run out of space at the altar that's a good problem I'm gonna invite as many of you as possible to come on up 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 come up come up come up I'm gonna ask those seated who have made that commitment to the Lord to come on up stand for me stand for me I want you to go at the back of these people so the folks at the front just come forward Folks at the front, come forward, come forward, come forward, Psst, come forward. Hey, I'm ugly enough to be on stage. You're prettier than me. Just come. Just come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Hey, Amen. Come a little closer, come a little closer. All right, those at the back, just let those folks stay at the back. We're going to close off here. Can the church say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. A number of individuals, some have already gone. 
decide to give their hearts to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You can make some space. They're coming around. Make some space. Those at the back, come up a little closer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, a number of individuals, a number of individuals, they are coming around. Come around. All the folks who are getting baptized today, praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? amen. Amen. I have one empty gown. I have one empty gown. I have one empty gown. You need it. Somebody claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can the church say amen? We, we have one empty gown. Is there anybody else who decided? God bless you. God bless you. Can the church say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have one empty gown. God wants his children. Is there another on the pulpit, on the platform? God bless you. God bless you. Can the church say hallelujah? I have one empty gown. Is there anybody else? You're coming home to your father. You're coming home to your father. You're coming home to your father. You have compassion. Is there anybody else? Jesus, I may not even have come leave my house deciding, but by the grace of God. Is there another? God bless you. There's one over there. Praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? amen. God bless you. Is there another? One empty gown. One empty gown. Oh my, that's hers. Praise the Lord. Let's give her a seat. Give her a seat. Can she get us, give a seat right there? God bless you, girl. God bless you. Hey, God's people are making their calling an election. Sure. One empty gown. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Oh, is that lady's gown? Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there another? God bless you, girl. Yes, Jesus. Is there another? Is there another? One empty gown. We're going home with the Lord. You're coming to the Father. You ain't coming to the brother. You're coming to the Father. Is there another? Is there anybody else on this altar? Who said, preacher, in the name of Jesus, if the Father will take me just as I am, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, can, can somebody say, hallelujah, somebody's there. God bless you. Is there another? Is there another? One more. One more. Father, I am not asking to be son, but it's better in your house. Is there another? Who want to say, Lord Jesus, I am surrendering my life today. Not another day. Maybe you didn't even come prepared, but the Spirit of the Lord spoke to your heart. Hey, you used to be walking with God, but you slip away. Today is your day of rejoicing. Is there another? Is there another? Final call. Final call. Final call. God bless you. That's your gown here. God bless you. Come give him the gown. Can you give him his gown? Praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? Amen. Hey, brethren, don't get angry with the preacher. Hey, Abraham negotiated with God. Can I just get five more minutes? Is that all right? Five more minutes, five more minutes. Is there another? Yes, yeah, sing that song. Is there another? I say in Portmore, God's people are going home. Is there, God bless you, girl. Can the church shout out hallelujah? Hey, is there another? 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 When we've been there 10,000 years, praise the Lord. Is there another? Right side. Bring the best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Best robe. Is there another? Is there another? Final call. Is there another? On this platform. Not yet give your heart to the Lord. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? I'm a 
must close this meeting. I must. Amen. Amen. Dear Nava, final call. Final call. Final call. Final call. Final call. Like me. I'm going to give the Bible workers to give everybody else a card. Everybody else. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. After 120 years, Noah had to stop preaching. Today, I have to stop for the day. I have to stop for the day. I want to give God a shout out to this moving of the Spirit in this place. Hallelujah. God, the sons and daughters of God are coming back home. Not perfect, but coming home. Coming home to a father full of compassion. And my God will forgive you. You will find a place in the kingdom. Amen. We are going to, hey, here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we're going to do this. Those of you who have decided to give your heart to the Lord in baptism with your gowns, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to stay on the lower end. Those of you, those of you who have made that commitment as a preacher, I have not made that decision today, but I'm here because it is my desire by the grace of God to surrender to him. I'm going to ask you to stay on the platform and those with the gowns to stay at the bottom. Is that all right? So I'm going to ask you guys to come up. If you have a gown, stay at the bottom. If you don't have a gown, come up for me. Those of you up here with a gown, stay, come to the bottom for your vows. Amen. And those of you without a gown, good, good, good. Those of you with a gown, go down to the bottom. Those of you without a gown, stay. If you have a gown, go down to, yes, you have a gown. You have a gown to the bottom. Yes, there's a gown here. Yes. yes. Okay, good. The rest of you, you don't have a gown, come up for me. If you're down here, you must have a gown. Come up, sis. Amen. 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 Can the church say Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to ask. So here's how we're going to go. Card. You will sign up the card. I take the moment pray for you. Is that all right? Yes. I take the moment pray for you. Just give each one of them a card. Each person a card. Give each person a card. Each person a card. I'll take them up. Give, give her a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card? Did you get a card here? Okay. Good, good, good. Now, now Pastor Smith is going to take us through the vows. And I'm going to ask all the persons up here, sign up your card right now. Pastor Smith, you go through the vow while they're signing their card. Amen. You will agree with me that the Spirit of the Living God is in this place. You will agree. All you have to do is very easy. Listen, it's very easy. Number one, all those persons who are going to be baptized, you must raise your hand. So I want you to sort of settle down for me at this time. No movement. 
among those who will be baptized. Number one, do you accept and you're certain that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? He is Lord of your life. And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with God? Do you want to do that? Amen. Raise your hand. Can I hear the church say amen? amen? Number two, one thing about the evangelist is that he preaches from the Bible. He allows the Bible to speak. Do you therefore accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental belief of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with the teachings of the Bible? Can I hear the church say amen? amen. Final one says, Final one says, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ? To be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offering, and a life of service. That means at another crusade, some of you, one of you might even be the preacher. You'll be working as a deacon. Hello. You don't know what plans God have for your life. And wherever he leads, you want to follow. Is that your pledge? Bow oh, with your head with me as we pray. Before I pray for you, I am seeing that you are in an attitude of prayer. Thank you. We need to hear from the church. To the members of the church, you have seen the candidates raising their hands that they have accepted Jesus, they have accepted the teaching of the Bible, and they want to be baptized. Will a member of the church make a motion that we accept these individuals as members of the church subject to their baptism. I so move, thank you. Still talking to the members of the church. All those who are in favor of the motion and you want these individuals to be baptized, only baptized members of the church, can I see by uplifted right hand. Amen. If you could just turn and look around. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. These are the members of the church, and they are happy for you, and they want to see you get baptized. Amen. Take the hands down. Amen. All those who believe that they should not be baptized, can I see by the same side? Turn around. No, not one. Bow your head with me as we pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are happy to know that you're a God of second chance. And all of us here today, oh, somehow, like the prodigal son, we have all been messed up. But God, there's a way back home. And we're happy that there's a way back home. So today, dear God, your people have come. And they are coming back to you. And oh God, like that father, just put your loving arms around them. 
Help them to know that there is forgiveness in Jesus. And he who the Son set free, they are free indeed. The devil is a loser. The devil have been defeated. And there is victory in Jesus. So Lord, as we leave from here to the place of baptism, go before us and do your work yourself. Defeat the enemy. May we have a glorious baptismal service. And your name, may your name be honored and glorified, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Amen. Let the church shout hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. For those of you are about to be, who are about to be baptized, you're making the best decision in your lifetime. And God is with you. From here on, we're going to ensure there are some buses waiting for you. For all those who will be baptized, make sure you get a seat on the bus, Bible workers. You need to ensure that the can.